this is unboxing of a um, Mead ETX 9T, I think which has been deforked and will be used as a spotting scope. Let's open it and see. Okay, I have now opened it. Let's see what is inside. Uh, on top of it comes this, which looks like an eyepiece. Let me unwrap it. Okay, um, Mead Super Plus Soul 26mm eyepiece. This is a good eyepiece actually. Gives a good full view. Uh, in a one and a quarter inch barrel so good start good okay, let's see what is inside okay, newspaper 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 oh that here comes oh it has one of these thingies oh let me bring it out okay looks very well packed Oh, the jam. This is practically, I have looked through this, and this is practically a, like a, a lovely Questor. I have looked through a Questor. I know how Questor performs, and this must be like something like that. The only thing I'm not happy is that it doesn't have a eyepiece stopper here, eyepiece cap. But generally it looks beautiful, look at it. And this is the focuser on its own, it costs 11 pounds. That's nice. Okay, that's the mirror. Okay, no uh, finder scope, but let us open the cap and see what is there. Okay, this is a quest star. So I put it on this. Uh, Spanner scope uh, mount, which is quite sturdy, but it really is doing well. It's light. I think the original spotter scope that goes on this is a Bushnell, Bushnell Voyager or Discovery. It's really, yeah, really heavier than this. So this is quite lighter. We must have no problem. So I'm going to put it. Uh, look at outside. What's going on? In the big like bad world. Okay. So from the window there are a lot of <laughs> gardener, that's what you will see. And um, it's raining outside, I don't want to expose it to rain. So I'll just look through here and see how what can I see. Of course, my hand is shaking and holding the camera on the eyepiece. Forty millimeter plus so from Ostara, which is my one of my best cheapest. But the best. Now well, let's see what we can see here. So I prefer this 40 millimeter one. It has a good eye relief also. So these are the flowers that I was looking at and you can see even with the zoom, high zoom of this camera uh, mobile you don't see any individual flowers 
But with this, uh, I could see the stems of them, and I could actually focus on them. Tonight is the 14th of the lunar cycle, and as you can see, I'm observing the moon. It's full moon, so you just can barely see the craters and fissures near the uh, limb around the circle of the moon. I've used the Celestron C90, which is a max of very good telescope very well built, well built and I've used a, um, a similar Maxito from the Mead again Mead ATX uh, 90 EC electronic control I'm not using electronic control in this observation just used by hand to guide it uh, as, a, as an example of what I can see I have chosen a crater Okay, the crater which I've chosen is very insignificant crater. The only thing that attracted me, my attention was that I saw a bright spot at this here and a very strange bright spot here, which at the telescope, uh, which I was using the or Orion refractor, uh, it was barely visible. And I just wanted to know what is this, so I just brought the tele um max it off just to look at it i'm telling you this is not an easy feature you may not be able to pick it um this is a moon map lunar globe hd that shows this the crater is called bergius and this is a feature that i try to look at with both these telescopes and i use this eyepiece which is the TMB um, six millimeter TMB optical. It's a Chinese uh, uh, brand based on the TMB design of the optics. It's very good for planetary and uh, uh, high magnification views. I'm, I'm telling you, I've not seen anything better than this for um, uh, low focal point eyepieces and high magnification. And Celestron could show it, the crater, barely you could see it. With Orion, you could see it. Celestron made it very clear. This made it completely visible, the Mead ETX 90 EC. Uh, if I want to pick a telescope for observation, probably I will pick this one. This is a superb telescope, this Celestron Mac. Uh, C90 is one of the best planetary telescopes you can get, one of the best Maxitofs. I never thought anything can beat this one. I can split the trapezium in the Orion, the heart of the Orion Nebula with this. Easy. And it shows color in them. Very good optics. This one beat it in that. In showing the crater Birgis the Mead ETX 90. Optically it is superb, superior. The same eyepiece and the same crater and two telescopes. I tried it with the Orion uh, refractor, short tube, 80 millimeter, sorry, sky watcher. Skywatcher uh, 80 millimeter refractor, which is really good telescope. I must say that it's a very good telescope. I first saw this feature on that telescope, but I was able to completely see it clearly without much effort. You know, you no strain on the eye or anything with this meat telescope. Really happy with this. I bought it recently from the auction site. I'm really impressed with the quality. I was worried because I got it at a very good bargain price and I was worried that what's wrong with it. On the first night that I picked it and looked at the moon then look at the Jupiter, I was amazed. Tonight it could split the tiniest minor detail on the limb of the moon, usually invisible with any telescope you cannot see that. 
this one not only picked it it discerned it uh, with the I must say with the sky watcher found what is the name of this feature but it was with the celestron and with the um, meat that I could actually approach the clarity that the um, moon globe HD could actually provide of course in this one you can zoom a lot but the illumination level and the features are not the same exactly it's near Grimaldi I must say that uh, you can crater hop from Grimaldi to uh, to the northern tip of it northern I don't know which way anyway uh, to the tip of it this by the way shows the image in the uh, correct way <laughs> upright one this shows reverse so it's confusing what is what um, anyway in the tip of the Grimaldi if you look for the Birgios you will find it on the map or a proper map or a crater um, lunar map I'm impressed with this if I want to buy telescope I definitely recommend this meet of course you must know planetary telescopes Maxitov include this Maxitov have a narrower field of view than a rich field telescope like the Sky Watcher 80. Sky Watcher 80 is perfect for planetary viewing, uh, sorry, for wide angle, wide field of view viewing of the extended objects like nebula and the star clusters and the galaxies like M31, which is really vast, is the closest galaxy to Earth. It practically covers a big patch of the sky. It was discovered in the Middle East by an Iranian called Azufi. There is a crater named after him uh, who lived near somewhere near Tehran, I think. And uh, he discovered in the 10th century in the dark skies. And uh, now we have we are going to the footsteps of this in great scientists, astronomers. Birgius. Birgius, I wonder who was that, but I have to look. Many years ago, when I was younger, I had the opportunity actually to look through a Questor three and a half inch um, um, Maxitov telescope. Is it? It's a. Uh, it's Rolls Royce of the telescopes. Uh, that was amazing, and I could see with that uh, such features. The good thing about the Mead is that optically is very close to that almost identical you cannot say the difference the thing is that questor had the better mechanics for the movements of the telescope uh, whereas this one is a little bit uh, not as good as that for example the parts of it is also plastic not all of it but, anyway. but optically is as good as questor questor if you want to buy a questor second hand is nothing less than three thousand pounds Questor is a three and a half inch telescope. You have to pay three and a half thousand, but there are seven inch version of it, which is I think is in around twenty thousand pounds. And with this one, which I bought is one hundred twenty pound, I can reach the optical quality of a Questor three and a half inch, which is if you buy new is around four or five thousand pound. By second hand is around three thousand five hundred, something like that, depending, of course, uh, on the uh, model and the year of the manufacturer. Questor was around for seventy years now, and uh, it's a well-established brand. There's high precision equipment, Rolls Royce, as I told you, diamond studded. <laughs> it's just practically it. best of the best, and Mead ETX comes close to that. This BTTX 90 I think is optically equal to that. I've looked through both of them. And mid is equal. Mechanically, Questor is superior, of course. Um, what I'm amazed about this mid is that no matter how many times I move the telescope, remove the eyepiece and put it back, focus stays the same. That's amazing. With this you have to struggle with this. <laughs> Any other telescope I've seen, you cannot really reach the same focus all the time without fidgeting with it. With this one, I removed the eyepiece, put it on the other telescope, put it there, remove this whole assembly away, put it back again. The focus is the same, it's not changed. I don't need to adjust it. 
Let's create a sharp image. Wow. Okay. Uh, I describe how it looks through the Meet ETX uh, 90. This is Meet ETX 125. It's like a spacecraft, is Apollo spacecraft flying over the moon. I never use this term with any telescope. These limp features is because you look at them as if they're really uh, from uh, from attitude, as if you're flying over it. This is that experience. Me DTX 125. I think every every media I have seen, and I have a few of them now, is has exceptional optical quality. Celestron Maxatov uh, is good. This one C90 is really good. Of course, the um, ETX 90 is better than that. Me ETX 90 better than that. Has an edge over it. The optics of this I told you is similar to Questar. But this one is exceptional. The uh, bigger than this uh, Celestron doesn't have this size 125. The Maxitov, or if they have it, I've not seen it. I've not looked through it. But uh, I have, I have uh, two of the Schmidt Cassie Green in this range, 5 inch 127, 125. And they need collimation and other things. They're not really good. Collimation is a tricky process with the Schmidt Cassie grains. And uh, it's Maxatops. I love Maxatops. This is the best. <laughs> I wonder why the meat have not built a 150mm Maxatop, ETX Maxatop. Have they, have they ever made? I wonder. The collimation perfect. You don't need any, any change. You know, they just bump it around everywhere. And uh, it stays the same. It's like flying over it. Oh, I've got to go back and take a look. I love this. Of course, I have to mention it. it's full moon. Full moon is a different time of the observation. You cannot see much shadows in the central parts of the moon, just limp features. But that, that shows you the better views because you practically see the mountains from a profile of a mountain. That's, that's really the difference.